New York was severely affected by Hurricane Sandy in 2012, particularly New York City, its suburbs, and Long Island. Sandy's impacts included the flooding of the New York City subway system, many suburban communities, and all road tunnels entering Manhattan except the Lincoln Tunnel, and the closure of the New York Stock Exchange for two consecutive days. Numerous homes and businesses were destroyed by fire, including over 100 homes in Breezy Point, Queens. Large parts of the city and surrounding areas lost electricity for several days, and several thousand people in Midtown Manhattan were evacuated for six days due a crane collapse at Extels 157. Belleville Hospital Center and a few other large hospitals were closed and evacuated. At least 53 people died in New York as a result of the storm. Thousands of homes and an estimated 250,000 vehicles were destroyed during the storm. Economic losses across New York were estimated to be at least $18 billion. In June 2013, Michael Bloomberg, mayor of New York City, proposed a plan to protect the city against similar storms. Preparations On October 28, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo declared a state of emergency for every county in the state. He also asked for a pre-disaster declaration to better access federal assistance. Nassau County Executive Ed Mangano ordered voluntary evacuations of the South Shore Storm Surge area, which includes the area south of Sunrise Highway, as well as the North Shore's areas north of Route 25A and in elevations 15 feet above sea level or less. Shelters were opened at Levittown Memorial High School, Locust Valley High School, Nassau Community College and SUNY Old Westbury. In Suffolk County, officials ordered mandatory evacuations for residents of Fire Island and in surge zone areas in Babylon, Brookhaven, Islip, Riverhead, Southampton and South Hold. Shelters were opened at Hampton Bays High School, Satram East High School, and the Brentwood High School Sunderling Building. Most schools closed in Nassau and Suffolk counties on October 29 including Adelphi University, Hofstra University, Molloy College, Nassau Community College and Stony Brook University. On October 28, President Barack Obama signed an emergency declaration for the state of New York. The Metro North Railroad and the Long Island Railroad suspended service beginning 7 p.m. October 27 through October 29 and possibly October 30. Starbucks closed all of its outlets in the city and Long Island on October 28 at 4 p.m. to let employees get home before the transit system shut down. The stores remained closed on October 29. The Tappan Zee Bridge was closed October 29 at 4 p.m. EDT due to wind conditions. Mayor Michael Bloomberg told reporters on October 26 that the city had begun taking precautions but said at the time there was no call for mandatory evacuations and no plans to suspend the city's mass transit or cancel school. But on October 28, Governor Cuomo ordered the MTA, including the subway, closed and in a press conference immediately after Cuomo's announcement, Mayor Bloomberg ordered public schools closed on October 29. He ordered mandatory evacuations for Zone A which includes the southern tip of Manhattan, the Coney Island Brighton Beach and Red Hook areas of Brooklyn, the entire Rockaways Peninsula, much of Staten Island, City Island, and part of the Throgs Neck area of the Bronx. On October 28, officials activated the city's coastal emergency plan, with subway closings and the evacuation of residents in areas hit during Hurricane Irene in August 2011. More than 76 evacuation shelters were open around the city. The MTA announced that all subway, bus and commuter rail service would be suspended, beginning at 7 p.m. EDT on October 28 and expected to continue suspension through at least October 30. All path train service and stations were shut down at 12.01 a.m. October 29, 200 National Guard troops were deployed in the city. All bus carriers at the Port Authority bus terminal closed at 3 a.m. October 29. U.S. stock trading was suspended for October 29 and October 30. It was the first two-day weather closure since the Great Blizzard of 1888. All state courts were closed October 29, except for arraignments and emergency applications. 
NYU Langone Medical Center canceled all surgeries and medical procedures, except for emergency procedures. On October 27, Google postponed their planned Android event in New York City due to the storm. The Staten Island Ferry and East River Ferry services were suspended at least through October 29. Most bridges and tunnels closed. Major carriers cancelled all flights into and out of JFK, La Guardia and Newark Liberty airports until it was safe to fly. Broadway cancelled all October 28 evening and October 29 performances. Alternate side parking and parking meter regulations were suspended on October 29. Grand Central Terminal, Central Park and Battery Park were closed on October 29. The Holland Tunnel and the Brooklyn Euro Battery Tunnel closed at 2 p.m. EDT on October 29. The Tappan Zee Bridge was closed later on that day. One of the units at Indian Point Nuclear Power Plant was shut down around 10.45 p.m. October 29, because of external electrical grid issues according to plant operator Entergy. Impact While moving ashore in New Jersey the northern and eastern sides of Sandy were characterized with light, sporadic rainfall, but strong winds. Precipitation in New York reached 3.42 in in Sherman, in the extreme western portion of the state. The highest recorded wind gust in New York was 90 miles per hour at Islip. Supplemented by spring tide, the storm surge was approximately 14 feet above mean low water, flooding many tunnels and damaging electrical equipment. The 1821 Norfolk and Long Island hurricane was similarly powerful but struck at low tide and thus caused less flooding. United States Secretary of Health and Human Services Kathleen Sebelius declared a public health emergency October 31 for New York. During a news conference on November 1, Mayor Bloomberg announced, the majority of city parks and playgrounds will open by 8 a.m. EDT on Saturday, November 3 beginning at 3 p.m. EDT on Thursday, November 1, the city will distribute bottles of water and prepared meals at distribution centers around the city, including sites in Coney Island, the Rockaways, and parts of Staten Island. Residents will be allowed to take three meals and five bottles of water at a time. Bring your own bag, the mayor said. AT&T will bring in pods to provide cell service and charging stations near food centers. 400 members of the National Guard will be going door-to-door -door delivering meals and supplies to elderly and home-bound residents. A relief fund has been created just for residents of Staten Island, which United States Secretary of Homeland Security Janet Napolitano toured on November 2. Time Warner Cable donated $500,000 to the Mayor's Fund to advance New York City, and $50,000 each to the Red Cross of Northeastern New York and the Red Cross of Northern New Jersey. They also sent out vehicles with mobile charging stations and free Wi-Fi access points, as well as opened all its Wi-Fi spots in the city. On November 1, President Obama officially declared Rockland and Westchester counties disaster areas. The Federal Emergency Management Agency sent 30 teams of workers into damaged areas of the New York region. On November 2, the state of New York created a $100 million fund to help people hit hardest. NYU Langone Medical Center, evacuated during the storm, began reopening on November 5. On November 3, the National September 11 Memorial and Museum was being pumped free of flood water and reopened on the 6. Five emergency mobile gas stations were deployed by the military on Saturday, November 3, offering 10 free gallons per person. On November 5, weathercasters began tracking a coastal storm, a nor'easter, that threatened cleanup and recovery efforts in the state on November 7 and 8. Thousands of runners who came to the city to run the New York City Marathon met in Central Park on November 4. Due to the marathons being called off, many went to Staten Island to help storm victims. On November 5, about 750 workers resumed construction on Ground Zero. On November 5, Governor Cuomo signed an executive order saying that displaced New Yorkers could vote in the United States elections, 2012 at any polling place in the state. On November 7, Governor Cuomo fired Stephen Koo, the head of the New York Office of Emergency Management, 
after Cuomo discovered Ku had sent Suffolk County workers to clear a tree in his Long Island driveway as other victims needed help. On November 8, Governor Cuomo said estimated of storm damage is $33 billion for New York State. New York City and the counties of Nassau and Suffolk imposed odd-even gasoline rationing, as New Jersey had, to ease congestion and frustration at filling stations. The system began on November 9 in the wake of a shortage. The governor also temporarily waived certain taxes and pollution restrictions on fuel deliveries. On November 13, Michael Hove, COO of LIPA, resigned after criticism for slow Hurricane Sandy response. Equals venue closures equals, New York City schools remained closed through Friday, November 2 with classes resuming Monday for most students. But as many as 40,000 stayed home until November 7, 57 schools were still flooded as of that date. Many colleges and universities and K-12 schools in the tri-state area also cancelled classes. The Statue of Liberty was closed October 29, a day after its grand reopening. Both the statue and Ellis Island remained closed through 2012. The statue reopened July 4, 2013, while Ellis Island remained closed until 2014. The New York State Office of Parks, Recreation and Historic Preservation closed all state parks on Long Island until further notice, due to downed trees, dangling branches, beach erosion, and damaged boardwalks. A full list of the parks affected can be viewed by going to the reference for this paragraph. On November 1, CBS News reported the 76 shelters opened initially were being consolidated down to 15. On November 6, Mayor Bloomberg announced the closing of parks, playgrounds and beaches again for 24 hours starting at noon November 7, as the nor'easter neared. On November 6, John Jay High School in Brooklyn, being used as a shelter for Sandy victims, was shut down after about a dozen storm refugees came down with a stomach virus. Mayor Bloomberg said the school would be closed November 7 instead of opening for classes as scheduled, so it could be cleaned and then reopened. Equals fatalities equals, on November 29 the Associated Press reported a total of 48 people lost their lives citywide as a result of the storm. On June 25, 2013, the Medical Examiner's Office for New York City said that a man's body that was found in Queens in April had drowned due to Sandy, and was the 44th death citywide. Equals transportation equals, all New York City subway service and ferry service was disrupted for days, as were most major automobile tunnels and bridges. The three major airports, and Newark Liberty, were also closed. Waterways and services, on October 30, the John B. Cadell tanker was driven ashore at Staten Island. On October 31, NY Waterway ferries between Hudson County, New Jersey and Manhattan resumed service. The Staten Island ferry resumed full service November 2 and Staten Island Railway the next day. On November 1, fuel ships started arriving and reopened New York Harbor. On November 2, Governor Cuomo signed an executive order waiving the state's requirements that fuel tankers register and pay a tax before unloading. Ground, the George Washington Bridge, Thrugs Neck Bridge, Verrazano Bridge, and Whitestone Bridge closed at 7 p.m. EDT October 29. All road tunnels into Manhattan, except the Lincoln Tunnel, were flooded and closed, as were subway tunnels under the East River and the PATH subway system. Limited bus service resumed Tuesday evening, October 30. Limited MTA subway service was scheduled to resume on November 1 with two East River tunnels in operation and shuttle bus service to Manhattan from Brooklyn Termini. The Long Island Railroad remained closed due to storm damage until November 8, 2012. The LIR then reopened with partial service to most of his branches, excluding Long Beach. Nassau Inter-County Express and Suffolk County Transit suspended and or greatly limited service for the storm. In response to the flooding of tunnels and other infrastructure, the United States Army Corps of Engineers sent its national unwatering team. As of October 31, 2012, MTA bus service began operating on a regular schedule. 
the subway system was tested with plans to resume limited service to 14 of the 23 services on November 1. Path services remained suspended. The Long Island Railroad resumed limited, hourly service. Metro North restored hourly service on its Harlem line between North White Plains and Grand Central Terminal. The Hudson and New Haven line continued to be suspended. All bridges and tunnels were open except the Huell Carey Tunnel. Amtrak provides modified Northeast Regional service between Boston and New Haven, Connecticut and between Newark, New Jersey and Point South on Thursday, November 1. Amtrak will also operate shuttle service trains between Springfield, Massachusetts and New Haven, Keystone service trains between Harrisburg, Pennsylvania and Philadelphia and Downeaster service trains between Boston and Portland, Maine, along with additional overnight services to and from the Northeast on Friday, November 2, with schedules to be announced that day. There will be no Northeast regional service between Newark Penn Station and New Haven and no ASLA Express service for the length of the Northeast Corridor on Thursday. The Port Authority bus terminal reopens with no Greyhound line service or commuter buses to New Jersey. Governor Cuomo waived fares on MTA commuter rails, subways and buses through November 5. On the morning of November 1, the first train, an A train, pulled out of Penn Station three days after tunnels were flooded. Subway service in Lower Manhattan except for the IRT Lexington Avenue line into Brooklyn was disconnected. The G train, which runs a crosstown route between Queens and Brooklyn, Rockaway Park Shuttle, and part-time B, C, and Z trains were also suspended. The Holland Tunnel opened to buses only on November 2. HOV restrictions on bridges and Lincoln Tunnel ended on that day. By November 3 80% of subway service was restored. On November 6, the Queens Midtown Tunnel reopened one lane for buses heading into and out of Manhattan during rush hour. The Holland Tunnel reopened November 7 at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Queens Midtown Tunnel reopened on November 9 at 6 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The Huell Carey Brooklyn Battery Tunnel opened November 12 to limited rush hour bus service. Express buses run by the Metropolitan Transportation Authority from Brooklyn and Staten Island will use one lane of one tube to enter Manhattan from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and to leave Manhattan on 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and will stay closed at other times for repairs. DHS is funding development of airbags to be inflated in tunnels threatened by flooding. The MTA announced January 17, 2013, that fixing all damage on the South Ferry subway station would take up to June 2016 at the earliest. Airports and airlines, Delta Airlines cancelled all flights out of LaGuardia Airport through Tuesday, October 30 at 8 p.m. EDT. The three major airports serving New York City, JFK, La Guardia, and Newark, were closed as of 8 p.m. on October 29. More than 8,000 flights were cancelled by 4 p.m. EDT for the day of October 30. La Guardia and Newark Liberty led with a total of 2,400. As of early morning October 31, nearly 3,000 flights have already been cancelled. Newark Liberty Airport is to reopen at 3 p.m. EDT and JFK Airport at around noon EDT on October 31. La Guardia is likely to remain closed until November 1. As of October 31, 2012, JFK and Newark Liberty Airports began handling flights after 7 a.m. La Guardia Airport reopened November 1 at 7 a.m. Equals events equals. As scheduled. The Brooklyn Nets played the Toronto Raptors on Saturday, November 3rd at the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn, the new arena's first regular season game. The New York Knicks defeated the Miami Heat 104-84 in their season opener at Madison Square Garden on November 2nd. The Pittsburgh Steelers defeated the New York Giants 24-20 at MetLife Stadium on November 4th. Political, the hurricane damaged many homes beyond habitability. Governor Cuomo worked closely with President Barack Obama and with Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey, which was even more hard hit, to come to their aid. Cuomo allowed New York voters, via a specific provision aimed at accommodating those displaced, 
to cast provisional ballots for the 2012 election anywhere in New York State. Just because you're displaced doesn't mean you should be disenfranchised, Cuomo said. He also appointed a commission to examine the responses of New York utilities to damage caused by the storm. The Cuomo administration used $140 million of these funds, which had been intended to help lower the energy costs of residents affected by the damage, in order to pay for the broadcast of national TV ads promoting his new New York slogans, outside of New York. Many have been critical of the effort, including former New York Governor Elliot Spizza, who called the ads fluff, and a waste of taxpayer money. Cancelled, New York's Village Halloween Parade, held annually on October 31, was cancelled due to blackout conditions in Greenwich Village. After many complaints that running the race through affected areas would seem insensitive and would put further pressure on police and other service workers who would be better deployed in the recovery efforts, Mayor Bloomberg announced late afternoon November 2 that the New York City Marathon had been cancelled. The event was to take place on Sunday, November 4. Marathon officials said that it will not be rescheduled. On October 27, Google postponed their planned Android event in New York City due to the storm. Rescheduled, the opening game at the new Barclays Center in Brooklyn between the National Basketball Association's Brooklyn Nets and New York Knicks originally scheduled to take place on November 1 was rescheduled for November 26. The soccer game between the Red Bull New York and DC United in the 2012 Major League Soccer Playoffs, scheduled for November 3, was moved to November 7, due to a power outage at Red Bull Arena in New Jersey. Evacuations and rescues after the storm began. New York University Langan Medical Center was evacuated October 29 after the backup generators at the hospital failed due to flooding. Over 200 patients were safely transferred to other hospitals. Belleville Hospital Center, Coney Island Hospital, and Palisades Medical Center are additional New York City area hospitals which have been either partially or fully evacuated. The emergency medical services of New York City faced a series of challenges and setbacks during the storm relating to the flooding, closure, and evacuation of hospitals and FDNY EMS stations across the city. Downtown Hospital was closed in preparation for the storm, but several hospitals were forced to close during the storm, including Belleville Hospital, NYU Hospital, Manhattan VA Hospital, Metropolitan Hospital, Coney Island Hospital, and St. John's Hospital. A fire broke out on the fourth floor of Coney Island Hospital, which proved difficult for fire and EMS resources to gain access to due to flooding, high winds, and downed wires. Four out of five FDNY EMS stations in Manhattan were evacuated during the storm as flooding began to surround stations in low-lying areas, including M Station 4, Station 7, Station 8, and Station 10. Station 16, located at Harlem Hospital, did not have to evacuate. In Suffolk County and on Fire Island, numerous people are Euro, and at a Massapequa home. The dozen firefighters who sought to rescue the home's two residents a Euro were rescued by emergency crews via front-end loaders and high-axle vehicles. On October 29, National Guard troops arrived in Island Park, New York as anecdotal accounts and earlier reports of a substation explosion were officially denied by a LIPA representative. On October 30, Helicopter 23's rescue crew airlifted five adults and a child from the roof of a Staten Island house which was nearly submerged by flooding waters. The helicopter's name honors the 23 New York City police officers who lost their lives on September 11. On October 31, National Guard troops and local police were evacuating the last of 700 patients from New York's flood-ravaged Belleville Hospital to other hospitals and local shelters. On November 6, some of the state's residents that had been evacuated for Sandy were evacuated a second time due to a nor'easter that was expected to bring high winds, rain and possible snow to areas of New York. Damage On November 26, Governor Cuomo said Sandy cost the state $32 billion in damage and loss. Mayor Bloomberg announced earlier in the day that the storm caused $19 billion in losses in New York City, which was included in the estimate Cuomo gave equals electricity equals, as of the morning of November 1, 
Con Ed had restored two power networks, but there were still more than 600,000 customers without power throughout the five boroughs. Con Ed predicted most all of Manhattan would be fully restored by November 3. In the afternoon of November 1, Con Ed said it expected to restore the vast majority of customers who lost power by the weekend of November 10 and 11. The remaining customer restorations could take an additional week more. As of the morning of November 2, more than 1.3 million customers were without power, down from 2.2 million. As of 5 a.m. EDT on that date Con Edison said about 226,000 customers lacked service in Manhattan, 84,000 in Queens, 35,000 in Brooklyn, 54,000 in Staten Island 31,000 in the Bronx and 140,000 inches Westchester. On Long Island, the Long Island Power Authority said it still had about 532,000 customers without power, down from more than 900,000. As of 2 p.m. EDT November 2, 1,252,768 New Yorkers were without power. In the evening of November 2, the Long Island Power Authority said they expected to cut the number of customer outages by 150,000 by November 4. As of 4 a.m. Saturday, November 3, Con Ed reported about 94,769 customer outages in Manhattan. 81,372 customer outages in Queens, 37,504 customer outages in Staten Island, 31,448 customer outages in Brooklyn, 26,252 customer outages in the Bronx. During the evening of November 3, Con Ed announced all Manhattan power networks were back online. Approximately 153,000 Con Ed customers were without power as of 8 p.m. November 3, 9,211 customer outages in Manhattan, 74,067 customer outages in Queens, 27,842 customer outages in Staten Island, 24,707 customer outages in Brooklyn, 19,501 customer outages in the Bronx, as of around noon November 5. Con Ed reported those without electricity were 3,825 customer outages in Manhattan, 38,397 customer outages in Queens, 17,465 customer outages in Staten Island, 22,887 customer outages in Brooklyn, 88282 customer outages in the Bronx, as of January 2013. There were still 8,200 people without power. Equals fires equals. On October 30th, over 190 firefighters fought a six alarm fire that destroyed 111 structures and damaged another 20 in Breezy Point, Queens, as a result of the storm. The area had been under evacuation orders, but some residents rode out the storm. One firefighter and two residents were injured. The rescuers were in chest deep water and had to use a boat to reach survivors. A transformer explosion is suspected to have caused the fire. On October 31, Breezy Point residents pledged to rebuild their community. On November 2, Mayor Bloomberg announced the water in Breezy Point, Queens, was not safe to drink or boil. Residents were urged only use bottled water at the time. The rest of the city's tap supply is safe for drinking. According to Suffolk County Executive Steve Bellon, the many fires were sparked by trees coming down on wires, transformers blowing up and the wires going into the water. One home in West Babylon and another in Lindenhurst wouldn't stop burning, and had to be knocked down with payloaders. Equals wind equals. Heavy winds caused a construction crane atop 157 to collapse, causing the area to be evacuated on October 29. The crane was secured to the building Saturday, November 3 and West 57th Street reopened to traffic that evening. Space Shuttle Enterprise, on board the flight deck of the Intrepid Sea, Air and Space Museum in the Hudson River, was damaged. The shuttle's inflatable structure appears to have first deflated and then been torn by the high winds. Equals structures equals, the storm damaged, destroyed or severely flooded around 100,000 homes on Long Island. As of December 10, 2012, more than 2,000 homes were deemed uninhabitable with the total expected to go up.
Mayor Bloomberg stated November 3, there are 55,000 buildings in Zone A that were ordered to evacuate and must be inspected. So far 8,500 have been and about 80% of those buildings are safe. Damaged structures included community centers in South Brooklyn. The offices of the Jewish Community Council of Greater Coney Island, as well as a senior home run by the organization, were affected. The old Orchard Shoal Light in New York Harbor was destroyed by the hurricane. Looting, looters and burglars were arrested in Coney Island, the Rockaways, and other parts of New York City and Long Island which had been evacuated or damaged by the storm. Some posed as con-ed workers to fool their victims. Some other, would-be looters posed as rescue workers. On November 2, CBS and EW York reported, on Long Island, looting has become such a problem on the South Shore in the wake of Superstorm Sandy that state police are on patrol. In addition to the looting of homes and stores, Newsday and News 12 Long Island have reported armed robberies, criminal siphoning of gasoline out of vehicle or gas tanks, and thefts of generators. Some New Yorkers ignored advisements to evacuate in advance of the nor'easter of November 7, the Euro 8, in favor of protecting their property, and some thefts have been averted by residents who surprised those who had broken into their homes, by the National Guard, and by neighborhood watch groups. Shortly after 2.30 a.m. on Thursday, November 1, 35-year-old motorist Sean Bailey of St. Albans was arrested on charges of menacing and criminal possession of a weapon after he tried to cut in line at a mobile station on the corner of Astoria Boulevard and 43rd Street in Queens and pointed a pistol at another motorist who complained. Also in Brooklyn, tempers flared outside a Getty station, with drivers getting out of their cars and exchanging angry words, reports Fox News. Fox News further reported that gasoline, in heavy demand for both vehicles and home generators, had become scarce and frustration with fuel supplies topped the list of issues causing tensions to boil over in New Jersey, New York and Connecticut, the state's hardest hit by power outages in the wake of Superstorm Sandy. As of November 6, police reported 41 arrests in New York City stemming from fights at gas lines. The previous day, Jard Giacolon was arrested after he pulled a knife on a BP station employee in East Sitawkit, when he was told they were out of high-octane gas. The Stony Brook, Long Island team was charged with menacing and criminal possession of a weapon. References External links, National Hurricane Center Advisories, Hurricane Recovery and Volunteer Resources, The New York Times, Occupy Sandy Relief. Mapping Hurricane Sandy's Deadly Toll A Euro Interactive Feature A Euro Nighttimes.com, NYC Sandy Evacuation Zones Visually.